Hello YouTube, me again with another YouTube video. I just finished eating dinner, my little burrito, a bologna sandwich on a hamburger bun, and now I have a oh so wonderful power weight that is strawberry lemonade. Uh, however, before I start drinking that, I would like to get through one of these LDD tutorials so I won't be burping in my mouth the entire way through it. Um, anyhow, Today we are going to be going in depth over our selection tool. Uh, for those of you who do not know what the selection tool, it is this tool here and any other tools in this category. I'm already burping in my mouth. I haven't even drunk anything yet. I just did it again. Now then, the selection tool is your basic tool of life when it comes to LDD. You will use it every day that you are on the program. And you will use it in different ways once you master how to do it. Um, now then, each and every single one of these tools below it, as you can see there, do certain things to benefit one another. Uh, we're just going to start out with a simple structure, and it is going to be created... like so. So you've already done the first part of the selection tool. You just used our single selection tool to place these bricks into our um, workspace. That was it. That's how basic the single selection tool is. Now then, as you can see, this structure is great and most of my models are symmetrical on either side. So what happens if I want to build this again? Now then, if you're like me, you probably are very lazy and used to the whole copy and paste idea. So, you don't really want to come back over into the brick palette and drag each and every one of these bricks back out onto the screen, do you? Uh, no you don't. Therefore, there are two different ways to copy and paste inside of LDD. Now then, there's a generic way that captures every brick, and there is a um, picky, kind of choosy way to do it. So, as you can see, the second tool in these subcategories right here is called the Multiple Selection Tool. Now then, whenever you click that, it should be orange highlighted, just to make sure that it is like so. And what happens when you have this tool selected is you can click on any brick and multiple bricks will be highlighted at once. There you can see I highlighted every single one of the bricks that I placed down. <coughs> Sorry. Um, now then, since every single one of these bricks is highlighted, I can simply click on the clone tool and it will make a duplicate version and then I can place it on the other side. So, that is one way to do so. Now then, that's the picky choosy way of doing so. Um, what do I mean by picky choosy? Well, with the multiple selection tool, I can select only these bricks to copy and paste, like so. Or I can only select these bricks to copy and paste. So it's kind of picky choosy. You have a lot more choice with the multiple selection tool. Now then, the third tool over from the left, it is called the Connected Selection Tool. It is the generic way of just copy and paste. Basically what happens is any brick that you click on, whatever is connected to it, it highlights. So if I just want to highlight the entire thing, click on it and bam, everything is highlighted. It will copy and paste it and you don't have to click every single time like your uh multiple selection tool. <clears throat> I must be getting a cold from my sister or something. Um, I don't know. I guess she has a cold or something, whatever. Uh, so that's one way you can do it, and then you just come over and hit the clone tool, and bam, you have another one. Um, the other really good thing about the connected selection tool is if you have a really big model and you're not sure part of it is actually connected to the model, all you have to do is click somewhere on the model and then if every single brick highlights you are perfectly fine and it is connected to that model. If every brick doesn't highlight and then 
says certain bricks are not, then you're kind of in trouble and you need to find out a way to connect those bricks. Okay, moving on to the fourth one over from the light or uh, left. Now then, this one should be called the color selection tool. You are going to click on that and it should be highlighted in orange once more. Now then, what's really good about this one is, let's say I open up uh, the gun mock that we just recently did, the CLR-51. Let's say I want to see the internals of the CLR-51, as in the bolt, uh, the uh, charging ham handle, and everything of that sort. And in order to do so, I have to move away all of this lighter gray here. So if I wanted to, I could use the color selection tool, select every brick of that color, and simply drag it away. And then this is our entire, um, yeah, this is our entire charging handle and bolt assembly. As you can see, the buttstock, the EOTech, uh, your mag release, the end of the barrel, your trigger assembly, and your fire selector switch are also able to be seen. And that's what makes the color selection tool really useful. Another thing that makes the color selection tool useful is say I really hate this plain dark gray color and I want to make it a magical tan. There you have it, I just made it a magical tan. All you have to do is select whichever color you want, click on the paint tool, find the color you want, click on that color, and it switches to it, no problem. Um, I should probably change this back to the original color. Okay, now then that is settled out, I'm going to hit Control S to save, and that is like so. Now then, the fifth tool from the left is called the Shape Selection Tool. Now then, I haven't really found a use for this. Um, only on a couple occasions did I find a use for this. I actually used the last one more than this one. But what's great about the, uh, yeah, what's great about the shape selection tool is say on these rail systems, I want to see how many one by two flat tiles with studs on top I used. I can click on one of them and it will show me every single one in the model. Um, on the CLR-51, I used 110 of those. Let's say I want to see how many... Um, let's see how many... Let's say I want to build the charging handle and I want to see how many slope pieces I'll need. Because uh, those slope pieces are really hard to find sometimes. Well, you would need 16 of them, including the ones in the stock. So, as you can see, you'll need a lot of them and it does come in handy every once in a while I've used only three of the 1 by 10 by 1's I've used 27 of the really really big 6 by 4's and that's what basically that's the only useful thing for the shape selection tool and now then the very last one in this entire row right here is called the color and shape selection tool uh, so let's say you have a model like, um, I'm not really sure I have a model on this computer to show you guys. Let's see if it's on the hammer. Yeah, I think I have an idea of what to say. So let's say I have the black 1x2 studs or 1x2 flats with studs on them and they're on the rail system here here and the one on the other side now then at the same time I have the same brick in tan on top of this rail system but I only want to grab the ones out of here so in order to do so I would click on the color shape selection tool and click there and then gently remove them and as you can see there are a few more than what I said there was because obviously there are uh, some placed throughout the model, but um, that would be how you do that. Uh, it's not too hard. It's actually technically pretty easy, and um, yeah. Uh, now then, this last tool here, it's called the invert selection tool. Uh, this is actually trial and error for me. I have never used this tool before, uh, so I don't know if. Let's say, let's take the color selection tool and select the entire 
dark gray part and then put the invert selection. So as you can see, the invert selection tool will select everything that isn't highlighted right now. So let's say I highlighted this entire dark gray um, dark gray metallic color, which is our mag release, our magazine, our charging handle, our uh, bolt assembly, our barrel, fire selector, and trigger, I believe I said that. And I didn't want to move those, I just wanted to move everything around it. I would click on the invert selection tool and then gently drag all of that away to reveal all my internals as you can see here. And that's pretty much how uh, you would do that. Um, and that's the in only use I can think for the invert selection tool. Uh, let's say you want to highlight all the black, but then you want to highlight all the tan. We'll hit invert selection, uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, that was a pretty interesting learning experience. I hope you guys learned something about all the uh, selector tools that you can use. And there are a lot of shortcuts that you can do with these selector tools using all of the other bricks as well. So I just wanted to show you guys that. And uh, one more thing, as just a special treat, if you want to select this entire model without hitting the connected button, click and hold and drag all the way across and you will select the entire model or the entire bricks that are in that vicinity. So that's just in case you don't want to use the connected selection tool or maybe a part isn't connected that you don't want connected so all you have to do is click and drag all the way across to select and uh, yep. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys found these videos helpful. Uh, I do a lot of these, so please stick around on my channel. I'll probably upload more in the future. And yeah, that was pretty much it for this video. Remember, comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos like this one. I hope you guys have a nice day. Thanks for watching.